Hi, this is Anna Bevan Gravely with NC Free, and I'm joined by Dan Lawler, who's running in House District 72. Um, hi, Dan. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Is there anything you'd like to share with our members before we get started? Well, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. This is pretty amazing, especially since we're in, through a pandemic right now, and I'm a first-time candidate having no clue exactly how to run, and it's pretty difficult to go door-to-door -door without scaring the neighbors. So uh, this is a great format, and I appreciate you doing this. Um, personally, for me, I'm a father of two. I have a son that is now... Uh, been off the payroll since he got out of college, and I'm very proud of him. He lives in Atlanta, and he's going to be getting married next year to a lovely young lady that we have welcomed into the family. I have a daughter that is, like most college kids, trying to find her voice <laughs> and kind of making some things. I'm very proud of her also. And I currently work as a, a special ed teacher at R.J. Reynolds High School in Winston-Salem and uh, a baseball coach. So. Awesome. Awesome. I played softball in college and my brother played baseball in college. So Oh really? He must yep. be pretty good. Pretty uh, good. Eh, he's better than I am. Um, but that's okay. Uh, what position? I was um, pitcher and third base. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I can't do pitching in softball, but I could teach Man, lots of heat. Lots of heat. <laughs> Quick reactions. Um, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, let's just dive into the questions. Okay. Sorry for the detour. Um, but what, uh, have you ever owned a business or been in a management position within a business? Uh, I have never owned a business, but I was in the sporting good industry for 30 years, hmm. or close to 30 years. I worked for Spalding Sporting Goods, and I was in sales and marketing for quite all, most of those with different uh, hats during the course of time. And it really was an amazing thing. I saw the very best in a business and the very worst as we kind of had some issues and stuff. But I, I really started out, which is really important. I had two great mentors uh, when I started. I was in premium incentives, which is really looking back, I was blessed with the fact that you had both sales and marketing glued together. And it was to create different ideas for other companies using sporting themes and spalling sporting goods. That's That was my indoctrination into sport, you know, sales mm -hmm. and business world. Uh, Bill Berry was like a second dad, kind of took me under his wing. And for a few years, I was involved with the premium incentive part of it. And then as my second dad, uh, Andy Studwell, uh, who was my second mentor, he was basically saved me from the team sports and where I can make better money in the pro golf sales where in the 1980s and 90s is where it exploded. So uh, I was very, very fortunate to be involved in that. And then uh, back in at the turn of the 21st century, KKR bought the company, kind of raided it, and uh, it got broken up into pieces. Uh, the pro golf sales went into Callaway Golf, which is what got me out to Winston-Salem. And I was with them for the last for five years, and then um, now as a teacher. So. That was basically the thing. So saw the very best and worst of, mm. uh, of business and also really understanding the fact of uh, a true sick capitalism at, the, at its best back in the 80s and 90s and learned a lot of great lessons from that. Yeah, awesome. Um, would you say that our current level of state and federal taxation is too high, too low, or just about right? I think, Anna, in normal times, uh, I think like most entrepreneurs, we're always like, it's too high. But under the, and I, and I love the uh, term that Dr. Jeremiah has said uh, in one of his many uh, sermons, is the fact that we're kind of living through um, a disruptive moments. And this 2020 is pretty uh, parallel in, in regards with things that are, we've never witnessed before in a generation or even a lifetime. So, under those things, the Goldilocks, it's probably we're perfect where we are. You know, North Carolina has a corporate uh, tax rate of 2.5, probably could be lower. However, it's still competitive under the circumstances. And I'm really afraid that is, and you probably know better than I, as you talk with different people in different groups, that we have a major shortfall that's going to happen 
when we get out of this pandemic. And we're going to have to pay the, the issues of what we're doing right now. And there is a big, maybe one, maybe two, maybe even three different groups that our tax increase is on their mind. And that is not the way to go. So I kind of think right now we're, we need to hunker down, stay with what we have. We're very competitive. I think there's a lot of optimism when we get through this pandemic for North Carolina as a whole. And uh, we have some great opportunities for us. So I would say right now it's just right till we get through 2021. All right. And then lower it. <laughs> so we go okay. Lower. Um, so how would you describe the key principles of free enterprise? You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I am really um, a firm believer in regards to uh, the altruistic capitalist idea. I think that is the best approach. And we, we hear all these other things about government interventions and all these other things. We really forget that the engine that pays for all these institutions that we cherish they come from the economy and people working. And I think we've lost sight of that through this, this virus. Um, you know, when you look at um, basically the principles of, of, of a business, I always kind of look at three things. There's, you, you create, you have to fill a need, right? There's a, you're looking for society or community needs something and a business entrepreneur figures out there's a need there and can fill it. And a perfect case in point is just recently, look at what Ford did. When talked about in business too much uh, when you talk and you listen to newscasts and so forth. And, and the entrepreneurs really got to figure out the risk factors and understand to go ahead and do those things. It, uh, an example of that would be one of my closest friends. I am fortunate that I have buddies that are independent owners. They have made their way and some have been extremely successful. Uh, one of my childhood friends that were college buddies, we played college baseball in high school together. Uh, he has done very well in Hawaii. Um, and the, the difference was I went corporate. We kind of were together and together and all of a sudden I went the corporate route, a little safer, kind of build up on the corporate ladder. He decided to do it on his own and, and, he, and he struck it rich. Um, that's courage. I, I don't, I know that a lot of people can't do that. And that's a perfect case of, of principles that I don't think is really talked about enough when people look at businesses as, I don't know, sometimes they even think of it as the evil empire and they lose sight of what the reality is. Um, I guess we need to have better communication skills on how important business is to everything else that is cherishable. Um, and the third thing is integrity. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when I was with Spalding, and again, you can only look at it from a point of view of who I am. Mm -hmm. But the 80s and 90s, I, I look back at the 30 years of where I worked, and I would say 27 of them were incredible years. The friendships, the things I learned, the people I contacted with, uh, not just also in the company I worked and represented, but also the businesses that I helped with pro golf's people that you go to a private country club, those, those are mom and pop accounts that basically they're their own business. They're trying to figure out ways to make a living and to help them build and structure and really to become kind of an advisory, uh, what do they call it? An advisory man that is there championing their ideas and so forth. And that you're a partner in that, in that relationship. And um, that was really amazing. And the leadership showed me that, that integrity of, play hard, work hard, everybody was, you were looking at it for each other's back. Mm -hmm. On the bad side is the fact that where sometimes we get caught up in the greed in the short term numbers of corporations and that always gets the front page news. And that's what happened with Spalding where it, it got broken up, EBITDA came in, we were looking for, we disrupted dis, uh, what we call um, 
dis distribution centers that we used to have mm -hmm. and we kind of threw them all into one pot and mm -hmm. caused a lot of upheaval and really hard feelings for the business and the uh, our customers that were really loyal to us and we lost that. And then what happened was in Spalding's case, uh, Russell Athletics took the team sports, which mm -hmm. is baseball, mm -hmm. softball, mm -hmm. football, basketball, and the pro golf went into, um, uh, you know, basically Callaway golf. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line of all that is those three elements of principles are really so important. And we need to talk more about that in, in business mm -hmm. as we explain that, that we are really helping the community at large and making a better uh, community and society. Mm -hmm. the business yeah. is the engine. Yeah, thank you. Um, do you feel it's appropriate for state or local governments to offer incentives to private businesses in consideration of locating, expanding, or conducting business in a particular part of the state? The incentives, you, you got to be careful what, what you mean by incentives. If it's just cost, that's a dangerous slippery slope because there's no loyalty built into that. And I, and I think that way, uh, if it's just based on cost, we're going to lose long term. Short term, you may win it, but long term, it's, it's a bad thing. But incentive is part of American capitalists. You've got to be able to figure out ways to sell the features and benefits of your mm -hmm. place. Winston Salem has, and I am really optimistic, and we'll get into this maybe later, about the fact that you have an infrastructure in place, you have great college colleges, you know, from Wake Forest University to mm -hmm. Salem State to even the UNC School of the Arts. For, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All these things, and those, those are just three. And then you got Salem College. So you've got a college infrastructure. You've got great hospitals. You have uh, in, in, um, Innovation tr uh, Quarter, which was created by Wake Forest for small businesses and mentoring programs to enhance and get people here. So there is, that's called incentives. You're trying to showcase the big picture, the features and benefits, and you don't get lost in just the actual cost of, oh, we'll give you no, you know, zero percent of corporate tax, or the, you get involved in the whole ball, of, and there's a win-win. Haynes mm -hmm. Brands is probably a perfect case in point of what a great community they have become in regards to Winston-Salem. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they've done so many great things, even with just recently with the mass, creating a mass night and mm -hmm. all these other issues. Those are things that are available for incentives to incentive to other companies coming mm -hmm. in is to create that. So yes, you got to have, you got to have a sizzle to have people coming in. And I think we'll have an opportunity to do that after we get through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like um, how you just said sizzle. I think that's a that's an interesting perspective uh, and definitely fresh. So I, I'll be thinking about that for a little while. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, in your in your opinion, and, and this question is, um, it put it in different context now in the time of COVID. But what is the appropriate balance in the scope of federal and state regulatory requirements on business? And what, in your opinion, is the best way to balance protections without impugning economic vitality? You know, I, I have to think about that one. That's, that's a tough one because it's all about balance, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll give you an analogy, I guess is probably the best way because I, I really can't express it otherwise. When I was growing up and with buddies and stuff, we used to love amusement parks, right? Always, we would always, the first and last ride on, in an amusement park was the bumper cars. We'd go into the bumper cars, and I don't know if it's a guy thing or not, but it's just <laughs> the excitement of doing it and stuff. Yes. And, and I look at this as the arena of the, the bumper cars is the economy. It's the business sector of, of the United States. The bumper car is us, our, our businesses. We're riding our businesses. And you're going to have the highs and lows. You're going to get hit sometimes you're ready for it and sometimes you're not. And government is the boundary around it. So that if let's say I'm going and a buddy gets me from behind and I go out of control momentarily, I go into the barrier. 
I don't go outside and hurt the, the general public. So I'm back in the arena. Mm -hmm. I really think in lieu of, in, in a broad sense of what I think about government, government is, that's what they're good for. It's kind of like um, in the Federalist Papers when, um, I believe it was Madison that wrote it, could have been Hamilton, but I think it's, it was Madison that said that if men were angels, there would be no need for government. Mm -hmm. So you've got government parting here to, to protect the general and the public health. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be deciding regulatory things of winners and losers. Let, mm -hmm. let the economy aside. And most of the time that happens, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the balance of that is where I understand you have to have certain regulatory issues that are set up structurally, but it should not be to where I give you an unfair advantage because I want you to succeed and I don't want to mm -hmm. succeed, mm -hmm. if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So I think that's kind of the balance of the regulatory issues that you have to have and that it's got to be more, I think that's, probably the best. I'm not really big on a lot of structure. Let, let them happen and make sure everybody's safe. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Dan, if you're elected at, um, at the end of the year or in, in November, uh, what would be your top three priorities as it pertains to the business community? You know, you know that is a great question because it really is the, is the heart of the matter of all this. I think the biggest thing is trust, is trying to build a trust between the business community and the community at large, because I really do believe that we have lost sight of what is happening to us around with all these things. The pandemic for better or worse, showed us a lot of the short falls of all the institutions we cherish, education, the underbelly of that, the problems that we're gonna have going forward with that, healthcare, police reform, criminal law, all those things were exposed in the last number of months. And business can really be the engine to help support these as we get through mm -hmm. this. Um, you know, it's one of the things that I love history. So if you look back in the 60s when we had the, the Watts riots and all the, in the basically upheaval that was happening in the inner cities, most companies left the inner cities we are probably posed for the same thing. Last week I was uh, reading about Minneapolis. There's over 1,500 uh, companies there. Most of them are not returning. It's destroyed. Mm. It, you know, it's kind of like what I said earlier with my buddy who, with Courage, that he created his own business and kind of went through all these things in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He said when he hires somebody, people forget I'm hiring them because I trust them to do a good job for my business. Mm -hmm. I'm not just arbitrarily hiring somebody for the, they're gonna help me and I help them. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win. It's a, um, a kind of a true sick kind of thought philosophy. Mm -hmm. And so with the business sector is, is to allow what we have, like I mentioned earlier, the infrastructure to get companies to come to Winston-Salem or to North Carolina could be, I mean, I'd be pushing, obviously, to sell Winston-Salem, because that would be the district I represent. <laughs> but the reality is there's so many things there, and the fact that it is a combination of a city and a, and a, and a town. Mm -hmm. So for companies coming in, what do they want? They want to have their, they want to have good production from their employees. They want them safe. They want them happy. Happy employee is a productive per all those factors come into it and you have this wonderful opportunity ahead of us. And it, and it will definitely be an availability that is for all of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I, and I kind of look forward to that. It's the optimism and the innovation that's going to bring companies here. And then we're going to have to do the aftermath of, I mean, obviously I'm a, a teacher right now. So my first love is education and changing some of the things. And I've had some ideas there. Police reform is in the news every day. I grew up with a family that were, <laughs> I mean, were police officers. So my, my look at police officers are much different than some other people. And so from a standpoint there, the big important thing is, is to be able to talk, to be able to have a communication of why they think that way, instead of just yelling out issues all the time about 
I'm right, you're wrong, or you're mm -hmm. wrong, you're right, and I'm wrong. Kind of sit down and then kind of mold and cultivate solutions, real solutions that will help us through those things. And I think we'll be better off in the long run because of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Dan, I have loved this time um, to hear your perspective and your, um, and your fresh take on, on these great ideas. Um, where can our members go to learn more about you? Well, well thanks for asking. Um, my, basically, they could go on elect Dan Lawler, simple as that, or danlawler72.com, and that would be, um, I have a web page that's set up there, and um, it, there's even questions and comments. They can help uh, be part of the, the new system, new narrative, I guess, in regards of helping out and structuring for this new campaign. So yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and I hope you have a great rest of the day and good luck on the campaign trail. Well, thank you. And if there's anything I can do, please keep communications open. I love to learn as I go. So absolutely. So thank you so much for doing this. Awesome. Bye. Uh, take care of yourself.